So today we are going to discuss or continue our discussion on carbohydrates. So we are on cyclic forms of monosaccharide, but first let's have our review. Okay, so we have it here. Now this time you are going to Okay, you are going to identify here. I have carbohydrates here. Now, what car may I know what carbohydrate is this? Okay, this is. Okay, first thing is you will count how many carb carbon atoms present. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have five carbon atoms. Okay, so what is this? Mm. This is a okay. ribose. Okay, this is a ribose. As we know, class, that ribose is um partakes ribose partakes in the in our RNA and in our DNA and even in our ATP. So when we see five member, I uh, five carbon. Five carbons, then it's a monosaccharide. Then we can have a clue that oh, it's a ribose. Okay, it's a ribose. So it's present in our DNA. Okay. Then we have our okay, this one. All right. So what car uh monosaccharide is this? Okay, so we have six carbon atoms, and then, okay, so this is our galactose, okay, now our galactose, so if you know the, if you are familiar to the structure of glucose, then you will know that this is our galactose, a glucose and galactose, okay, looks like the same but there's a difference okay what about this one what monosaccharide is this it's it's our oh no it's our glucose okay it's our glucose so it has also six carbon atoms then it's an aldehyde it's a hexose it's an aldohexose Okay, so what's the difference of galactose and glucose? Alright, so the only difference is our carbon 4. And the rest is the same. Okay, so we have glucose, uh, galactose, and our glucose. So that's why we always say that our galactose is a C4 epimer epimer of our glucose it's in our carbon four carbon four so in carbon four the hydroxyl group on in glucose is on the right side while on the galactose uh, the hydroxyl group is on the left side okay so our galactose it is uh, often called as brain sugar and it also participates in the in our blood types okay blood types so if we want to determine our blood types then uh the because the sugar there is our galactose then we have our glucose glucose is uh found in our in our blood also it is uh very important our blood most of our blood is the sugar there is glucose that's why we, when we want to have our if I determine if high blood ka then it's a glucose test it's our glucose test it's the test of the amount of glucose present in our, in your blood and then we have here our also, glucose is also called as dextrose. Okay, 
It's the sugar found in your dextrose, the one that injected by the doctor. Then we have here our, what's this? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. A very uh, obvious. It's a ketone and it is our fructose. Okay, so it's our fructose. It's a fruit sugar. It's very sweet. Okay, so it, it is found in, in fruits. If you are on a diet, then use fruits uh, like honey, okay, fructose. Right, it's our fructose. Then we have, let's go. So that's all for our review. Let's go to the cyclic forms of monosaccharides. Okay, so in this chapter earlier, what we have just learned is our open chain. Okay, this one. A line structure or a, an open chain polyhydroxyaldehyde, polyhydroxy ketones. However, in our in, in ex, there are many experimental evidences that indicates that monosaccharides containing five or four five or more or more carbon atoms are are actually equilibrium with cyclic structures. And they are the dominant forms of our of our uh, of our sugars. So we have here which is our line bond structure. It's an open chain, but here we will now look at the cyclic forms or the uh, not open chain not an open chain anymore anymore but a cyclic for me forms of our monosaccharides now let's go to hemiacetals and hemiketals so when we have hemiacetals hemiacetals are formed when an alcohol reattacks an aldehydes and then we have our hemiketals when our alcohol attacks ketones. Okay, so we have it here. Alright, so as you can see, this is an our alcohol. Okay, alcohol is when we have an R and then it has an OH. That's an alcohol, methanol, ethanol, butanol, propanol, alcohols. Okay, then we have our aldehydes. Okay, so you know much about aldehydes and when an alcohol attacks an aldehydes class it forms hemiacetals okay so as you can see the formation of hemiacetals we have okay all it is unsaturated all single bonds okay and then we have here we have an alcohol here so in an alcohol the OH okay the OR group here the OR group attacks our carbon and then that uh, that makes our double bond here to be the electrons to be pushed pushed back in our oxygen all right okay sorry about that all right and then because it has lone pairs here from the double point then it will attack our H okay our H forming okay at first it's R1 C O the okay lone pair and then H and then we have O R two but then the H here will attack the high the alright sorry the electrons here will attack the hydrogen in an alcohol forming an O H okay so that's why we has we have here so this is a hemiacetal so hemiacetal is formed. When an aldehyde is attacked by an alcohol. Okay. 
Now, please take note of the structures that will be included in your exams. Okay, and then we have here, I may, I may give you structures, uh, and then you will name if it's an alcohol, hemiacetal, or hemiketal, aldehyde, or any. And then just take note of that, and then we have an, a hemiketal. So we have a hemiketal is a ket when a ketone is attacked by an, an alcohol again. Okay, so we have here the OR group in our alcohol attacks our carbon atom here. The double bond will be pushed here in our back in our oxygen. And then it's very reactive, so it will react to hydrogen here. So forming this one. Okay, so what's the difference of hemiacetal and hemiketal? Aside from it is it, aside from an aldehyde is attacked by an alcohol, a ketone is attacked by an aldehyde. Okay. Aside from that, in a structure you can see that the H here, so it's an it's a hemiacetal, and when you see R, okay, three R's that is a hemiketal. Okay. So what are what's the importance of these uh, of these reactions of hemiacetal and hemiketal? So Hemiacetal and hemiketals are very important because they participate in the cyclization of our monosaccharides. Okay, so these are the reactions that happens on forming a ring of our monosaccharides. So we've learned early uh, in this chap early in this chapter we have only talked about the open chain, but this time we will talk about uh, the cyclic forms of our monosaccharides. So let's go here. We know that this is our what is this? Okay, this is a glucose. Okay, yes, it's D. Alright, so we have D glucose, and then note that we have here. Okay, the electrons here in an alcohol. Okay. So this one, this is an alcohol. So the O, the lone pair in our oxygen will attack the will attack here in our carbon one, okay? Which because this is an aldehyde, and then the electrons will be pushed, forming a partial negative, and it's partial negative. It's very reactive, so it will it will react to the hydrogen here also thereby when you that reacts so this one okay this one so why why a cyclic because mas dool na noon siya mas dool ang OH and then the aldehyde okay that's why it's very dumb the the cyclic form is dominant because it is much easier. This results to an ability of the carbonyl group to react. Uh, this one, the carbonyl group to react with our hydroxyl group. Mas easy siya since mas to open siya. Alright. Okay, so let's take of no note of that. We have it here. So this is our carbon one. In an open chain, then this is our carbon 2 in an open chain. 3, 4, okay, 5. And then, okay, we have a bond here. 5. And then we have our OH. OH. And then, since this one is at this OH, what? This O here attacks C carbon. And then the Double bond will be pushed. Okay, so we will now form a bond. Okay, this one. This bond. Now take note, class, that all the all on the right side. Okay, we have the OH, the H, and the hydroxyl groups. All the right side. In, when formed in a cyclic form, will be on the appears below, while 
on the all the all the atoms on the left side appears above the ring when it is uh in a ring okay let's go back <laughs> all right so we have it here now let's take a look at this one okay on the third structure so as we can see in carbon 2 the oh is on the right side so even in it is in a cyclic form the oh will appear below the ring so that's why we have oh here and the h is on the left side so we have here under above the ring and when this one h appears below while the oh appears above okay then we have the carbon four the oh appears below because below the ring because in an open chain it is on the right side and then we have here in carbon four a carbon okay in carbon five okay this is one two. yes this is carbon five okay the, in carbon five we have the oh okay the ch to oh will appear on the oh, above the ring okay it appears above the ring so since this is a d-glucose okay so this is a d-glucose all right so we have ch2 will always appear on uh, above the ring above the ring whereas if this is an l the ch2 oh appears below okay and now let's take a look on the position of our OH of our OH this OH here is not with the same anymore with the OH this OH here is not anymore the same with this OH yes because this OH okay, the this has attacked our aldehyde group here okay, this one and then this will be pushed and then this oh here is actually the o okay o attacking the h from an alcohol this is an o from an aldehyde attacking the alcohol so that's why the OH here is not the same with the OH in an open chain in the carbon 5. Because the OH here is this one. This uh, attacking H in our alcohol in carbon 5. Okay. Now let's take a note that when the OH here. Okay, wait. When the OH here. OH here in our anomeric carbon. Okay, anomeric carbon is where uh car is the carbon where the hemiacetals and hemiketals form. So we have it here, it's in carbon one. Okay, the carbon one is our anomeric carbon, so that's why we call it sometimes uh C1 anomer. C1 anomer, carbon 1 anomer. And when we have OH, which is all above, okay, which is above the ring, and when it is also on the same side of our CH2OH, okay, so when they are on the same side, it is called as beta, okay, beta anomer. So that's why we call this one as beta. Then, since this is D, so it's a D, so it's D, okay? And also, if, okay, if OH, uh, OH appears below, okay, below the carbon 1, the, the enumeric carbon, so that is our alpha, alpha, okay, alpha. But if it's above, then it's a beta. 
Okay, so it's D. The D here uh, are just, it's just copied from here. And then we have this name is gluco. Okay, we have a new name, glucopyranose. Okay, we have pyranose because... Okay. All right. Now, we have this one is our six-membered ring. Okay, so the same two types of ring structures are possible. We have five-membered ring. When a five when a five member ring, okay, a ring is called as a furine. As okay, this one a furine a fu or furanose ring, okay, derived from our compound furine. So six member ring or furanose ring derived from parent compound furine. Okay, so if we have five, we call it furanose and then we have six we call the Hayworth projection as pyranose okay so your hexose are pyranose when it is formed in a cyclic form and your pentose will be furanose okay as we can see here in our Hayworth projection, okay, we have five, one, two, three, four, five, a five-member dream. Okay, it is furine. Furine and uh, hexose, six-member dream, it is pyrine. But when we use that one in our glucose, we use pyranose in pyranose. So pyrine and furine, pyrine and furine are the parent uh, compound. Okay, the parent compound. And then pyranose and we have furanose are just derivation, are just derivatives of our pyrine and furine. Okay, we have here, so that's why we call this one as beta D glucopyranose. Okay, so this is a hemiacetal of the glucose. Hayworth projection. Okay, so earlier, okay, this one is our, this line bond structure is our uh, Fisher projection, Fisher projection, while a cyclic form is our Hayworth projection. Okay, so let's go back. All right, now let's go to our ketone. Okay, so when the ketone is attacked by an alcohol, in our carbon, we have an alcohol and the C5. Okay, it will attack the carbon 2. So if it is attacked by our carbon 2, it means that uh, the hemi hemiketal will be formed at carbon 2. And this means that our ceto is our enomeric carbon. Enomeric carbon is where our hemiketal or hemiacetals form okay so we have here during uh cyclization cyclization of course because our glucose rotates yes we've talked that uh the rotation the positive the dextro rotate dextro rotatory the positive okay when it's you know it rotates to the right and then it's negative if it's levorotatory, it rotates to the left. Okay, so that's why it can form as a it can form cyclic form. Okay, so we have here okay the O the lone pairs in the electrons in the oxygen will attack the carbon, the carbon two. This becomes okay, this one. We have the carbon 1, CH2OH, and then carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, and then the oxygen here. The oxygen here, since it attacks our C2, it will form a bind, and the OA, the H here will be attacky, will be attacked from the here by the oxygen in our C2, C2, forming OH here, this one, 
see that one o h okay again this o h is not the same with the o h here yeah okay so again all that lies on the right side will be projected uh, below the ring okay so for the case of c3 carbon 3 the h is on the right so we have below and then for the case of hydroxyl group it's on the left side so it's up o h all all in the right will be below the ring all on the left side will be above the ring okay so we have here and then we have for this one note that this is our enumeric carbon c2 is our enumeric carbon if it is in a if it is a ketone okay it when a ketone is attacked by an alcohol the enumeric carbon is in c2 and then also, we have, I've talked to you already that if the OH in our enumeric carbon lies below and it's not, uh, it does not lie the same with our CH2OH, then that carbon, okay, that, that molecule is an alpha enumeric, okay, alpha, because it lies below. The OH lies below. And then we have alpha D fructo furanose. Okay, furanose because it is a five membered ring. Pyranose if it's a six. Furanose if it's five. Okay, so that's all for that. Okay, now let's go back. So we have psych again. In the cyclic hemiacetals of glucose, okay, if glu in glucose, C1 is our is now a chiral center. It is an enumeric carbon 2. Okay, so in C1, okay, okay, in the case of glucose metal. So let's go back to glucose. Alright. Is it true that C1 is now a chiral center? this one yes it is okay so c is now our oh and then we have h then we have here or then we have here r you see it's chiral different okay it's, they are different Okay. All right. Now this justifies on the formation of our hemiacetal. We talked, <laughs> we talked that this is our hemiacetal, and when in our glucose here, when we when we identify that C one is uh, when we justify that C one is our is a chiral center it says uh, when we draw that one the okay the bondings of c in enumeric carbon is this one oh h and then we have here okay the or we have or and then we have this one the r okay you see that one now if it's the same Okay, the same. This one is our hemiacetal. Hemiacetal. Now that goes that also true to our hemiketal. Hemiketal C. And then we have R. Okay, let me draw that one. Sorry. Okay, so... This one, this is uh, C2 enumeric carbon. We have this one. This is an R group. Then we have an OH. Okay, I'll write here. And then we have here. Okay, if that's OR. And then we have here. OR. 
You see that this is an, a hemi kettle. Now let's take a look if it's the same. I'll erase this one. This one. Now are they the same? Yeah, hey, yes. The same. Okay, so this justifies that our I know our glucose, our uh, aldehydes, our glucose, our fructose are hemiacetals and hemiketals. Okay, now so this time C1 is now okay and C1 is also a chiral center in our glucose. It's an anomeric carbon, two anomers of D glucose. So we have, okay, so we have an alpha D glucose or beta D glucose. So they are the two anomers of our carbon, of our glucose. Then we have the cyclic hemiacetals are readily interconvertible in aqueous solution. This interconversions of alpha and beta anomers in solutions accompanied by a change in specific rotation called muta rotation. Again, we talked that. Our glucose, our carbohydrates rotates. Okay, only sugars that form hemiacetals on hemi structures muta rotate. Okay, so those only those sugars only that forms hemiacetals and hemiketals uh, rotates undergoes muta rotation. So muta rotation. D dextrorotatory or then positive, then negative, it's levorotatory. Then we have in our two enumeric forms of beta of D glucose, we have alpha form. Okay, the OH, right? We've talked this already. That okay, again, we have an alpha anomer is when an OH in our C1 or any more enumeric carbon C1 because this is a glucose. Uh, and CH2OH of C5 are on opposite sides. Okay, on opposite sides, example this one, the OH here, and the CH2OH and C5, they are, they are opposite. They don't lie on the same side. Here, which is above, and this one is below. So they are alpha. And then it's beta. Okay, beta form when and CH2 here and the OH and C1 lies the same so they are beta form so anomers we have cyclic monosaccharides thus that differs only in the position of substituent of an anomeric carbon atom okay so we have an anomer is uh, the only differs on the position of oh okay of some atoms okay in a cyclic form it's an anomer but in an uh, polyhydroxyaldehyde, when we have our Fischer projection, then we have the enantiomers. We have the we have the D and L. Okay, D and L enantiomers. Now, any OH group at a chiral center that is to the right in a Fischer projection formula points down in the Hayworth projection formula. Okay. So anything on the right side. In a fissure projection, fissure projection is your line band structure of your monosaccharide. All on the right will, will be positioned below the ring in a Hayworth projection. And all on the left will be positioned uh, above our ring in a Hayworth projection. Okay, so let's go. We have this one. Okay, all aldoses with five or more carbon atoms establish similar equilibria, but with different percentages of alpha, beta, and open chain form. Okay, so in our body, uh, we have different percentages of uh, depending on uh, depending. On our body, we have different percentages of our beta. We have alpha, but usually in carbohydrates, it's beta. It's beta uh, because 
because later we'll know about more about it. Beta is mm, can be easily converted than our and can be easily uh, break, but uh, rather that uh, compared to our alpha. Fructose and other ketoses with sufficient number of carbon atoms also cyclize. Okay, we have the fructose. Yes, keto, other ketones. Uh, okay, so all uh, carbon, all molecules that have all carbohydrates that has five or more can cyclize. Five or more carbons can form cyclic. Okay, so we have, let's go. Now this time, each of the monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, and ribose, has each of the following structural characteristics. Okay, so this will be your work and activity. Okay. All right. Now we have this one. Okay. Now let's answer na lang. Okay. So it is a pentose. When it's a pentose, that is a? Na review na ni. It's a? Ribose. Okay. It is a ketose. When it's a ketose, then it's fructose. Its cyclic form has a six-membered ring. Okay, that would that could be glucose or galactose. Then its cyclic form has two carbon atoms. Two carbon atoms outside the ring. Its cyclic form has two carbon atoms outside the ring. All right, so we have it here. Okay, yes, outside the ring. Okay, this one. This is our fructose. Out two carbon atoms outside the ring. It's fructose. Okay. Yes. All right, now let's have an answer. Okay, yes. Letter C can be glucose and galactose. They are six numbered rings. All right. Now let's go. We have reactions of the sulfurides. We have five important reactions of monosaccharides. <coughs> we have oxidation to acidic sugars. Okay, now let's stop here. Okay, maputol ang video.